come to the stage. He, he hasn't been out a ton in a while, but he's a very funny gentleman. I love seeing him when he's up here, and uh, and he wears the best clothes I've ever seen. This guy dresses better than anyone I know, and he's super funny. Please put your hands together for Mr. Zach Kennedy. This is like the best crowd ever because I was so nervous and like I kept talking I kept talking to the other comics about how nervous I was but this is like the best crowd we could ever have because no matter how nervous you are all of you guys feel so welcoming so I just want you all to give yourself a round of applause for just being the best audience anyway. yeah. I was really nervous about the show like like earlier this week we were here from we were here Monday for the open mic and I, I remember sitting beside my friend. And I was like, oh, Jen's show's this Friday. We should go to Jen's show. And she was like, yeah, we should go to Jen's show. And then I walked out and I saw the poster and I was like, oh, that's my name. I guess we're going. And then I went to get dressed before I came and I put this outfit on and I was like, oh, I really should have had that big of a dinner. This doesn't look good. Uh, but I'm finally talking to somebody, uh, talking to someone to plan on dating them. And uh, that's really good. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, she, she, she met my grandma, which was a terrible idea on my part. Because uh, my grandma was just like, Oh, you met somebody! When are you getting married? <laughs> what? <laughs> She's like, When are you planning on getting married? I'm like, Whoa, grandma, whoa! We haven't even had kids yet. <laughs> yeah. She stayed over a few times, um, which is, is a good thing. And uh, but one of the things is I, w I woke up one morning and uh, she was gone. I was like, oh, that worked out pretty well. And uh, I looked over on the side of the bed and uh, her shirt was there. And I was like, well, that's weird. <laughs> and so I texted her. I'm like, hey, you left your shirt. She goes, yeah, it was dark. <laughs> Didn't you come over here with just one shirt? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was dark. What did you leave with? It was dark. <laughs> We're still working on that one. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Do you guys hear, do you guys remember about like uh, SOPA and CISPA? Do you guys remember that? Yeah. And like everybody was like, sign up for the petition, we don't want that shit. You guys all remember that? Uh-huh. Yeah, because they wanted to invade our privacy, they wanted to look up our search browser, all that other good stuff. They wanted to look that up and we were like, no, and we stopped two of them. And then the NSA came and they were like, fuck all you guys, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> It's, it makes me nervous. I don't know about you guys. Like, I get nervous when somebody asks to use my phone to use Google. They're like, hey man, let me use your phone real quick. What do you need it for? I'm going to Google something. What letter does it start with? <laughs> R? Nah. <laughs> M? Mm -mm. P? Bitch, you don't need to touch my phone. <laughs> Because I use Google for everything. Anything I ever want to look up, I use Google for it. It's, it's to the point where every time I use Google, Google's, you know how Google like auto-suggests things, right? Google auto-suggests things, Google will be like, did you mean porn? I'm just like, hmm. I mean, I got time. Uh, A lot of my friends, whenever they find out comedy, a lot of people I meet, whenever they find out I do comedy, they're like, Oh, you do comedy? Man, you must get a lot of pussy when you're really funny. I'm just like, Have you ever been to an open mic? Doesn't quite work like that. People are really into comedy, they don't really care about like who they end up with at the night. They just really want to get a laugh, so we'll, we'll make fun of ourselves a lot. Like, one of my, one of my favorite jokes is, uh, Sadly, a true story is uh, I took my dog to the vet, and uh, when I took my dog to the vet, um, 
there were cats there, and I'm super allergic to cats. So like as soon as I walked in, like my nose started running, my eyes started watering, it was really bad. And so like immediately I realized, I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. So like as soon as she got checked out, they were like, she's good to go. I got out of the vet, and I let my dog wander around for a little bit, let her go to the bathroom first, but my nose was still running, and so I did like a really gross thing, I went, like I snotted in my nose, I snotted in my hand, and uh, what you do is you just throw it away, whenever you're done, because you don't want to keep on, you don't want to hold on to that. And uh, I blindly like threw it behind me. Yeah. What happened when I blindly threw it behind me is there was someone behind me. Not just someone, it was a little girl. That's how I felt, guys. Uh, I threw it behind me, and I didn't look yet, but I heard the noise, the noise that the noise that made me recognize that I did something wrong, I heard <laughs> Which is the sound of pure terror. And when I looked behind me, it was like this little girl, I was like, Oh no. Cause I don't know what to do at that point. There's a little girl, she's covered in snot, and I'm just like, Brent. And I left. Because her parents weren't watching, I could get away with this. Can you imagine that conversation with the parents? I don't want to imagine that conversation with the parents. That would be the worst. Ugh. My grandma said something the other day, and it still fucks with me. I just... My grandma said gang bang in front of me. There's no punchline, I'm just trying to work through that. Ugh. I don't know how to deal with that. What would you do if your grandma said gangbang in front of you? You could. <laughs> Sounds like an appropriate response. <laughs> I don't know what to do about your grandma crying. I'm like, I know there's a lot of ideas that went in my head when I was like, I'm gonna ask somebody what they do. Cry. Nope, that's the most reasonable. <laughs> Damn. So, uh, like I said, I was talking, I'm talking to somebody. It's going pretty well. Um, before her, I, I was in a, I was in a four and a half year relationship. It was, it was terrible. It was an absolute horrible relationship. But whenever you date someone for a really long time, you get really comfortable with them. You know what I'm saying? You get comfortable emotionally. You get comfortable physically. You start trying things out. One of the things uh, we tried out, she, uh, she read a Cosmo. Guys, don't let your girlfriends read Cosmos because they have uh, sex tips that don't really make sense all the time, or they're a little tricky. I remember one time, uh, my ex, she texted me and she goes, hey, come over, we're gonna try this new thing. To which I was immediately like, okay. I need no explanation at that point. We're gonna try something new, let's do this shit. And uh, I got over there and she was like, hey, I read this thing, we're gonna try it. And I was like, word up. And she, uh, she was like, just, just get naked. And I've never stripped so fast in my life. And uh, she laid down on the floor, and she's like, I just want you to lower down on me. Uh, I want you to lower your testicles down on my face. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was mid-doing it. I was mid-doing it going, oh, Cosmo. <laughs> I'm teabagging my girlfriend. <laughs> Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but my biggest fear in life is trying to explain that to the next person like I really fall in love with, because they're going to be like, I just want to do something for you. I want to make you happy. And I'm just going to be like, <laughs> Well, you're not going to like it. It's only going to make me happy. And I'm going to want to Snapchat it. Uh, like I said, I don't know, who, I don't know how I'm going to tell that, per that person how I want that done, so I just decided to do it in front of about 50 strangers and her. So, uh, so this is going well. Uh, <laughs> A lot of people, a lot of the comics know me as being very positive. It's just one of the things. Um, I'm, I'm a very happy person. I love, love living. I love where my life's at right now because I know one of the greatest groups of people I've ever known in my life. I don't know if you're taking pictures of me or give me the light. Okay. 
And, uh, but I didn't always be this way. Um, I remember one point in my life, it was a real low, had a lot of shit going on. My grandfather died, it was fucking with my head. And I, something a lot of people do, a lot of comics talk about depression, I was actually depressed. Uh, I had some medical shit going on and they gave me uh, painkillers. And one of the things they didn't tell me is that the painkillers cause depression. So if you already have depression, you can see where this is going. And uh, I contemplated suicide, and I actually tried to commit suicide at one point. I was drinking, I was popping these painkillers, and I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be done with all this. And one of the things I decided to do when I was trying to do that was uh, I'm going to text everyone I know, and I'm going to apologize for the shit that they don't know about. <laughs> So I went through my phone, texted people, called them, I let them know, I apologized for them, lost a lot of friends, uh, became a lot closer with some people, they're like, thanks for letting me know, man. And I was just like, no problem. Because I didn't expect to have to deal with it the next day. But as you can see, the idea only works so well. It was a very awkward next morning when I didn't kill myself and had to deal with all that shit. Everybody, thank you for coming out tonight. We all appreciate you. You guys got a lot of people coming out. Thank you, Zach Kennedy.